This video is about how to have a throat that is an open grave. Hi, I'm Bay Godfrey, and this is Bible Study Verse by Verse. If you'd open your Bible to Romans chapter 3 in the New Testament, we'll begin in just a moment. Romans chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. How to have a throat that's an open grave. A poisonous tongue. Listen to these words. Their throat is an open sepulcher, or grave. With their tongues, they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursings and bitterness. Understand how God looks at the speech of unbelievers. To have a throat that's like a tomb, a grave, that has been opened, a sepulcher, Understand that this is awful. This is the place where dead people are laid and been buried. It's like when Lazarus was buried and they put him in the tomb and he was all wrapped up and they'd rolled a stone in front of the door. And Jesus came four days later and Martha said, don't open it. It's going to be terrible. Smell is going to come out of there. It's going to be a stench. He's been dead and his body is rotting. This is the place where the dead have been buried. This is, this is the, the throat of an unsafe person. That rot comes up out. Their, their speech is like that. It's open and there's rotting and decay, decay and a smell. So when you open your mouth to speak, does death come out? Does it stink? Listen, they use their tongues for deceit. Their mouth is full of... Uh, their tongues have used for deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. This is what the unsafe person's speech is like. This is, these ideas are directed at how you communicate with other people. What you say to them. What you minister to them. What comes out of your mouth toward them. Tongue uses deceit. It means guile. You can't trust what they say. They manipulate to get their way. The poison and venom uh, is under their lips. Their mouth is full. It means it's overflowing with this stuff, with cursing and bitterness. It's cursing like it's calling upon God to curse somebody else. Calling upon Him as an expletive. Bitterness. Acid. Sharp. Harshness. Psalm 10 verse 7 says, His mouth is full of cursing and deceit, fraud and uh, and fraud, deceit and fraud, and under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Cursing, fraud, mischief, vanity, deceit. The tongue is an unruly evil, James 3, 8 tells us, full of deadly poison. What comes out of your mouth comes from your heart. Matthew 15, 18 through 19 says, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. This is what's wrong with unsaved people. They're wrong at the heart. The inside where, they, where, where the deepest, darkest part of them is bad. And that comes out of their mouth. It's what comes out of their mouth because it's down deep into their hearts. The tongue is an unruly evil. Our words are just a product of what's in our hearts. Your words will either justify you, the scripture says, or they'll condemn you. Matthew 12, verse 37. By your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. You don't think God's going to look at your words and say, your, your throat was an open sepulcher. Your mouth had deceit coming out of it. Your lips were poison of asps and cursing and bitterness came out of you. Uh, those, are, those are the things that defile you. They defile a man. They're either going to justify you before God because your words bring grace to people's lives. You minister grace to those who hear you. You have good words to say to them. Are they going to minister death to other people? What we want as a Christian is for our words to be acceptable to God and in His sight. 
Romans 10, 9 and said, 10, 9 and 10 says, with our mouth we confess the Lord Jesus. You know, out of your mouth should not flow bitter water and sweet water. It shouldn't be that the junk that comes out of your mouth contradicts the, the, the God words that you speak that come out of your mouth. With our mouth we worship God, we worship God. Hebrews 13, 5. By him, therefore, let us offer the, the, the sacrifice of praise to God continually. So, by the Holy Spirit, through the Lord Jesus, praise God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Out of your mouth should come what's in your heart, and that's gratefulness to God, uh, worshiping God, speaking well to other people, trying to minister the word of God to other people. Confess aloud God's righteousness. The prayer of the upright is a delight uh, to God, Proverbs 13, 15, 8. So Christians, use your speech to glorify God. Colossians 4, 6 says, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. With grace, with salt, you're stopping the corruption. You're not adding to it. Your words build people up and encourage them. Pray that God accepts your speech. Psalms 19, 14 says, Let the words of my mouth, here's a prayer, let the words that come out of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, where those words are coming from, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. The mouth of the world is an open sepulcher. It's deceit, it's poison, it's cursing and bitterness. That's not the way the Christians are supposed to be. Thanks for watching. I hope the Lord saves you as you commit yourself in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. I have hundreds of Bible teaching videos on my YouTube channel. You can click the red circle icon below to go there. Then you can click on the playlist and select the videos you like to watch. If you have questions or comments about this video, you can email me at all one word, Bible study, v by v at gmail.com. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Bible study verse by verse.